read it over and over again and you start to believe it. The words make it real. One kid told me, you never know if it's your best friend or your worst enemy that's doing this because so much of it comes to you anonymously. So you never know who to trust. As the days turned into weeks, John probed deeper into his son's online life. He discovered a folder on Ryan's computer containing a series of conversations between Ryan and a boy with a screen name he didn't recognize. The two of them were spending a lot of time exchanging information that they were finding online that had to do with suicide and death. They found one website that taught you how to hang yourself. So it gave you how to, how to tie the noose. There was a website that Ryan and this boy visited and they commiserated on that you plug in your personality traits and what you like and dislike, and then they, they spit out the best way you can commit suicide. The most chilling conversation was actually a very short one. Ryan started off saying, tonight's the night I think I'm going to do it. And the kid fired back, it's about blank in time. Two weeks later, in the early morning of October 7th, 2003, Ryan's sister found him hanging from a noose in his bathroom. In the weeks that followed, John felt compelled to track down the boy he thought might have been Ryan's co-conspirator. I approached him online with Ryan's ID, and I said, I'm Ryan's dad. I asked him, Are you, you know, were you friends with Ryan? And he said, yes. And I said, did you guys ever talk about death and suicide? And he said, no. I just flat out asked him, so what is your name? And he gave me his real name. And while I still had him online, I called the house and I got the father on the phone and I introduced myself to him and I said, I'm afraid that your son is perhaps thinking of doing what my son had done. The response was kind of weird. It was, uh, you know, he first said, well, I know nothing about computers. I don't have an email account, so you can't email this to me. And I said, well, I'd like to get it to you somehow. And he said, well, I'll have, you, I'll have my wife call you when she comes home from work. That evening went by, never got a call. Another day went by, no call. Four years have gone by now, and John says he never got a satisfying response from the boy or his family. Occasionally, he still visits the boy's website, which is full of references to death and suicide. I had so much unresolved pain, and I instinctively wanted somebody to pay for this. I wanted to blame somebody so desperately. Um, blame. I feel the computer, I can't blame the computer. The computer and the internet were not the cause of my son's suicide, but they helped I believe they helped amplify and accelerate the hurt and the pain that he was trying to deal with that started in person in the real world. Across the country, cases of cyberbullying have been springing up more and more. A few have ended in suicide most haven't. But it's clear that the internet has become a new weapon in the arsenal of adolescence, one that's not going away.